Good morning and welcome to Breakfast News. I'm Ashwarya Kapoor with you, wishing you all a Merry Christmas. And the big story that we are tracking today is the fresh militant attack in Assam. Let us begin by taking a look at the headlines. Assam toll crosses 70. Bodo militants attack new areas, even as center rushes para forces to the state. Home Minister Rajnath Singh to visit the affected areas today. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to launch a Good Governance Day from his Lok Sabha constituency Varanasi today. A day after government approves the re-promulgation of coal ordinance, e-auction process for 24 coal mines to start today. And Christians all over the world celebrate Christmas Eve with midnight mass and singing carols. The big story, the violence unleashed by Bodo militants in Assam spread to new areas since last night. In a backlash, local Adivasis held protest and they clashed with the police. Chief Minister Gogoi appealed for peace even as more paramilitary forces were rushed to the state. Here is more. Bodo militants launched fresh attacks in Assam's Udalguri district on Wednesday evening, a day after their serial attacks killed over 70 tribals. Tensions were also inflamed when angry Adivasi villagers, in retaliation, set ablaze houses of Bodos and held protests. Five people were killed in clashes with the police. Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi appealed for peace. Home Minister Rajnath Singh, who is in Assam, said the center will not hold any talks with the militants. जिस प्रकार की कार्रवाई की गई है, मैं समझता हूँ कि इसे एक militancy के रूप militancy के रूप में ही इसको रिकॉग्नाइज नहीं किया जाना चाहिए, बल्कि इसे मैं एक act of terror मानता हूँ। और act of terror से जैसे निपटा जाता है, वैसे ही हम इससे भी निपटेंगे। the Home Minister will travel to the affected districts on Thursday. He will meet the victims and also hold meetings with local administration and tribal leaders. A red alert is in force in the state. Kokrajhar and Sonitpur districts are under curfew since Tuesday night. Around 2,500 people have fled their homes and are staying in relief camps. <laughs> बॉर्डर में एक कंपनी सी आईपीएफ के हमने तैनात किया है जो एरिया डोमिनेशन और पेट्रोलिंग कर रही है इसके अलावा जगह जगह हमने नाका लगा रखे हैं प्रत्येक आसाम से आने वाली गाड़ियां आसाम की तरफ जाने वाली गाड़ियों और लोगों को नाका चेकिंग किया जा रहा है सर्च किया जा रहा है तो इस एरिया में हम लोग एरिया डोमिनेशन एक्सरसाइज कर रहे हैं और एरिया पीसफुल है a counter-insurgency operation is also underway. In addition to the 50 companies of central forces, 55 additional companies of paramilitary forces are being sent to the state. Chief Minister Tarun Gogoi has sought an investigation by the National Investigation Agency, while the centre has assured full support to the state. Bureau Report, Raja Sabha TV. All right, uh, joining me for a chat this morning on this issue is uh, Mr. Deepak Devan, who's the executive editor of Sun, Northeast Sun. Thank you so much, Mr. Devan, for joining us here this morning. Uh, Mr. Devan, talking about the Assam uh, violence, uh, there are now reports coming in that there were specific inputs, there were intelligence inputs that something like this is going to happen. The Bodo militants are going to strike. Do you think there's some sort of intelligence failure on the part of uh, the state machine? Yeah, yeah, intelligence failure plus inaction. See, the center had warned uh, sometime in November hmm. uh, to the Assam government that the Bodo militants, especially this uh, NDFB uh, Sonjit faction, which, which has carried out these uh, killings, would strike between 25th to 25th January. Hmm. And uh, a week uh, before, I mean, this incident, I yes. mean, sometime last week, uh, security forces had uh, gunned down two commander-level militants of NDRB, and uh, they were, uh, we were expecting retaliation from them. And, you know, and the surprisingly, yesterday, hmm. at uh, about past 12, yes. sometime 12.15 or something, hmm. police, state police is supposed to have intercepted or the army has intercepted conversation between the Bodo militants in which they specifically pointed out we would strike at these, these places around 4. 
Okay, they had given the specific yes, time as well. Yes, yes, yes. They got to know. I wonder why no preventive measures were taken. Four hours we had, they had to plan and uh, sort of, you know, counter this uh, attack. If they had acted, if they had uh, reacted to that intelligence input, I think the toll wouldn't have been uh, this high. Right. And I'm surprised uh, the, while the incident was taking place, after the incident took place, the chief secretary, Mr. Khosla, was still holidaying in uh, yes. Kaziranga. That is you know? uh, something that, uh, in fact, drew yeah, a that, lot that of criticism. That shows the administration. Uh, where is the administration? Hmm. Uh, but at the same time also, Mr. Diwan, do you think there has been some sort of negligence on the part of the centre as well? Because it's been, uh, since three decades, uh, these militants have killed close to 10,000 people in the state. Do you think there's some sort of negligence on the part of uh, centre as well? No, see, the thing is, what can centre do? If you treat this as a law and order problem, as your Home Minister said, you know, uh, it is a state subject. Yes. Centre is giving all assistance. Like yesterday, Mr. Uh, Gogoi, the Chief Minister of Sam, mm -hmm. sought more security forces and immediately, uh, I think the Home Ministry sanctioned 50 companies out of 50, 20 have already landed in Assam and this would be reaching today or yes. must have reached by now. Mm -hmm. The centre can provide assistance, but you know, the uh, there's a unified command in place. The Chief Minister is the chairman of the unified command. Under him is the army uh, stationed in the state or the paramilitary forces. Yes. But all these uh, counter-insurgency operations hmm. are under the unified command. They yes. have to act. Centre true. cannot uh, direct forces from Delhi That's to true, do this. But See, the, the, the local, is... you have to act with the local intelligence, local uh, sort of, uh, you know, you, if, if you monitor things. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, this is not the first time it has happened. Exactly. It is a very sensitive area. Mm. And this kind of problem, but, uh, you know, has remained in the news mm. since 1996. Yes. So, I think the, they have to be all-time alert. So... You talk, you're talking about the fact that the state government should be alert. But at the same time, what should be the strategy of the state government? Because uh, we saw whatever happened on Tuesday night, uh, just three hours before that, Arun, Mr. the Chief Minister of Assam was talking about uh, the anti-counter, these insurgency uh, measures should go on in the state. And three hours after that, we have this audacious attack. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Saying and doing, they're two different things. Yes. If you're administrative in charge, who can take the decision to deploy so-and-so or somebody who could have reacted after that police intelligence input, mm. uh, that what message they intercepted. I think that coordination was not there because the head of the administration was not present uh, in his office. Mm. He was enjoying an elephant ride in uh, Kaziranga. Exactly. Uh, also, at the same time, Mr. Devan, now Home Minister is saying that, uh, that they are not going to talk to these militants, at least at this moment for now. Do you think uh, that would be the solution? Well, I think there was no, uh, I mean, the talks were never on the table. See, you have to deal with this kind of uh, thing firmly. Hmm. Talk, what will you talk? Exactly. See, the thing is, a militant hmm. whose job is only to create uh, this kind of uh, panic by killing innocent. You know, yes. most of the victims are children and uh, women. Exactly. So the idea is just to make yeah. sure that you are really firmed and uh, yes. you are ready for all yeah, these yeah. operations. Yeah. Yes. Uh, thank you so much, Mr. Devan, for joining us here this morning and sharing your perspective on that story. And let's move on to other stories. Uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be in his Lok Sabha constituency Varanasi today to mark the Good Governance Day. The Prime Minister will visit uh, Asigha to inspect the progress of cleanliness drive launched by him last month. The centre had announced the initiative to commemorate former Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee's birthday amid controversy over a circular to CBSE schools on an essay writing competition during Christmas holiday. The centre informed the High Court yesterday that the entries of participants will also be accepted on 26th of December. And in the other big story, e-auction process for 24 coal mines will start today, a day after the government approved the coal ordinance and guidelines for mine allocations. Seven coal blocks are reserved for power sector, one for steel and 16 for cement and captive power plants. Tender documents will be released on 27th of December. The auction process will take place between 14th to 22nd of February. The government aims to earn 7 lakh crore rupees over the next 30 years through the process. 
And as mentioned, the union cabinet approved ordinances to push reforms in the coal and insurance sectors. Yesterday, the bills could not be taken up in the Rajya Sabha as the opposition held up proceedings for much of the month-long winter session that ended recently. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley said that the decisions will prove that the government will not delay its economic reforms agenda. The cabinet has approved an executive order on Wednesday to implement coal and insurance reforms, underlining the government's resolve to push through economic measures despite political opposition in parliament. Under the order, foreign firms can increase their participation in insurance joint ventures from 26% to 49%, a potential lifeline for a sector starved of capital and squeezed by regulations. The passage of coal bill is essential as it would pave way for auctioning of coal mines, which were cancelled by the Supreme Court. The ordinance demonstrates the firm commitment and the determination of this government to reforms. It also announces to the rest of the world, including investors, that this country can no longer wait. Coal allocation ka adhyadesh tha. लोक सभा ने उसे पारित किया था और राज्य सभा में उस पे चर्चा नहीं होने दी गई आज उस ऑर्डिनेंस को रीप्रमलगेट किया गया है द कैबिनेट्स अप्रूवल ड्रू शॉप रिएक्शंस फ्रॉम ऑपोजिशन पार्टीज सम एक्यूज्ड द गवर्नमेंट ऑफ यूजिंग ऑर्डिनेंस रूट टू स्कटल ऑपोजिशन टू द बिल्स अभी पार्लियामेंट को खत्म हुए दो दिन नहीं हुए हैं सेशन को खत्म हुए और सरकार ऑर्डिनेंसेस लाना चाहती है दुर्भाग्यपूर्ण है अगर इस तरह सरकार चलेगी तो पार्लियामेंट की इज्जत घटेगी ये भाव गणतंत्रिक प्रक्रिया के अवदमित कर मूल्य की टोटली अनडेमोक्रेटिक ओखने राज्यसभा एक मास धरे तरह एबसुलूट माइनरिटी आ राज्यसभा चौबीस घंटाओ ए बंद है अर्डिनेंस पास कर इन्स्योरेंस बिल केम इट वॉज रेफर टू ए सिलेक्ट कमिटी Two other bills have been referred to a select committee in Rajya Sabha. Three bills being referred to a Rajya Sabha select committee is unprecedented in any one session. President Pranab Mukherjee has to sign off the ordinance, which must be approved by lawmakers within six weeks of opening of the next session of Parliament, scheduled to begin in February next year. With inputs from Ravind Sharan, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Prime Minister, former in fact Prime Minister and BJP veteran Natal Bihari Vajpayee and freedom fighter Madan Mohan Malviye will be honoured with the Bharat Ratan, the country's highest civilian award. The President yesterday cleared the Cabinet's recommendations of both the names. BJP leaders as well as family members of the two awardees have welcomed the move as long overdue. Recognition as Bharat Ratna for two more of the country's jewels, recipients of the nation's highest civilian honor. टूटे हुए सपने की सुने कौन सिसकी अंतर को चीर व्यथा पलकों पर ठिठकी हार नहीं मानूंगा रार नहीं ठानूंगा काल के कपाल पर लिखता मिटाता हूँ की पुण्या का की Atal Bihari Vajpayee, the most eloquent and vibrant face of India's parliament, going back to the 1950s, a 10-term MP and orator par excellence, as the country's 11th Prime Minister, a global figure and statesman who took India's message of peace and progress to the world. Vajpayee will be 90 on Thursday. People who worked with him closely hold out rich personal memories. आज मिला ये काफी पहले मिल जाना चाहिए था राजनीति के रत्न तो वो काफी समय से हैं, हमेशा से हैं इनफैक्ट लेकिन आज भारत रत्न उनको देख के बहुत अच्छा किया गया है मुझे खुशी है कि इस अवसर पर भारत सरकार ने उन्हें भारत रत्न के सम्मान से अलंकृत करने का निर्णय किया है वे एकमात्र नेता हैं देश के जिनको संसद के अंदर तत्कालीन प्रधानमंत्री पंडित जवाहरलाल नेहरू ने भी जिनकी प्रशंसा की थी सराहना की थी उनके कार्य की विद द प्रेसिडेंट नॉट टू द यूनियन कैबिनेट डिसीजन अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी हैज बिकम द फर्स्ट लीडर फ्रॉम द कंट्रीज पोलिटिकल राइट टू बी कन्फर्ड दी ऑनर 
Prime Minister Modi tweeted and I quote, Atalji means so much to everyone, a guide, inspiration and giant among giants. His contribution to India is invaluable. Ishwar se prarthana karte hain ki Atal ji ko lambi zindagi saath saath swasth zindagi de. Hum chahenge ki wo swasth ho kar baithe aur hamara margadarshan kare. Hum logon ne Atal ji ke margadarshan mein karya kiya hai. Unne jo disha batayi hai usse kuno saar hum kam kar rahe hain. Aur sushasan aur vikas ye unhi ki kalpana hai jiske upar hum sab log aaj kam kar rahe hain. The other recipient, educationist Madan Mohan Malviya. Malviya founded the Banaras Hindu University and became one of the torchbearers of the freedom struggle, acting as a bridge between the moderates and the extremists. Known for his espousal of Hindu nationalism as one of the initial leaders of the far-right Hindu Mahasabha, Malviya was a social reformer and a successful parliamentarian. His family as well as political leaders to this day hold up his contribution to modern society. Last year when the UPA government had announced the Bharat Ratna for former cricketer Sachin Tendulkar and scientist CNR Rao, the BJP had criticized the Congress for ignoring the contribution of these legends. Vajpayee and Malviya join the list of treasures that will live forever. Bureau report Rajya Sabha Television. And the non-BJP parties have also welcomed Bharat Ratan being conferred on Atal Bihari Vajpayee and Madan Mohan Malviya. Let's take a listen. Atal Bihari Vajpayee Ji Ki Ko and Pandit Madan Mohan Malviya Ji Ko Dono Ko Bharat Ratan Ki Dene Ki Ko Kushna Kari Gai Hai Hum Loh Uska Swagat Kar Dain He is loved, respected across the country and across the world. There couldn't have been a better choice. He is truly a giant among giants. I joined the BJP and they encouraged me and gave me a lot of joy. I am very happy that I got a great deal in Bharat Ratna. It is a good choice. It is a good choice. But I will be able to say that Dr. Lohia and Jai Prakash Narayan Ji has also been given the name of Dr. Lohia and Jai Prakash Narayan Ji has also been given the name of Dr. Lohia and Jai Prakash Narayan Ji has also been given the name of Dr. Lohia and Jai Prakash Narayan Ji. और अटल जी से तो हमारा बरसों बरस का साथ था और बीजेपी में रहते हुए भी वो हिंदुस्तान का को जो कंपोजिट कल्चर है उसके प्रति हमेशा सजग रहते थे Welcome back after the break. Now, intense cold wave conditions continue to grip North India. Plummeting temperatures accompanied by dense fog have paralyzed normal life in most of the states. Cold and fog-related road accidents have also claimed more than 20 lives in Uttar Pradesh, with air and rail traffic badly hit. Here is a detailed report. It's been nearly a week of biting cold in the capital. And the weatherman says it's not easing off soon. As per Met Office predictions, cold conditions and thick fog will prevail in the North Indian region for a few more days. Night temperatures are 2 to 4 degrees below normal, whereas day temperatures are substantially below normal because of foggy conditions. And uh, in, in coming uh, few days, up to 4, 5, 6 days, uh, we don't see large changes in uh, uh, these temperature conditions. Dense fog has paralyzed air and rail traffic. Road transport has borne the brunt too. Fog-related accidents have become commonplace and they're often fatal too. In UP, 20 people were killed on a single day on the roads. Five were killed in a car pileup on the Yamuna Expressway, linking Agra with the capital. Large parts of the state continued to shiver on Wednesday. नहीं ओढ़ने को ने बिछाने को साबजी क्या करें पच्चे तंग हो रहे हैं छोटे छोटे परेशान हो रहे हैं इन राजस्थान टू आईसी विंड्स एंड थिक फॉग थ्रू नॉर्मल लाइफ आउट ऑफ गियर एटलिस्ट 30 ट्रेन्स इन द स्टेट आर रिपोर्टेड रनिंग बिहाइंड शेड्यूल सम बाय 20 आवर्स एंड मोर कोल्ड वेव आल्सो स्वेप्ट ह सारे ताप रहे हैं किसी को वो साधन नहीं है काम को है नहीं सवारी मिलता नहीं बैठ के आग से करे ठंड बहुत है 
in national capital Delhi, both minimum and maximum temperature settled well below the normal mark. Schools have been ordered closed till the 15th of January in view of the extreme cold conditions. The origin lies here. Severe cold weather and snow in hill states of Jammu and Kashmir, Himachal Pradesh and Uttarakhand are said to be responsible for the chill across North India. Minimum temperatures in the mountains have fallen to several degrees below freezing. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And on to some international news now, a 13-year-old Nigerian girl recounted her story of how Islamic State terrorists tried to force her to be a suicide bomber. The girl, the Zahara Adamu, was handed over to the terrorists by her own father. She and two other girls were sent to trigger a blast in a textile market in Kano City. While the two other girls were killed, Adamu was injured. Four civilians were killed in the attack. Adamu was taken to the hospital and later arrested. <laughs> Shadia, not a me is the Shadia. So got your coon and bacon wake with sunny vanity and her son. Scotty to Zaki, Natty Ah, Scotty, Zaki, she got Aljana in Kikai. Uncumaki near Suratul Kashi, Zaki, she got Aljana Shima, Unkina Sala, a car look at tea, the Karatun or Annie, the Sala to Tuha, Zaki, she got Aljana. Natty to Zas Harbi and Kokuma Sasani Arani. And more news on Islamic State. Well, the group captured a Jordanian pilot on Wednesday after his warplane from the US-led coalition crashed on a mission against the jihadists in Syria. Jordan said the pilot was captured near the city of Raqqa. Both the jihadists and activists reporting to the Britain-based Syrian Observatory for Human Rights said that the plane was hit by an anti-aircraft missile. But the United States has denied the claims and believes mechanical problem is uh, the likely cause of the crash. We said right from the beginning that this is going to be a continuous and long war and we think that we uh, have a duty to defend our country and our region from this uh, wave of terrorism. Uh, so uh, Jordan will continue in its fight against terrorism. And for more international news and updates, here is the World Wrap. Pakistan is setting up military courts for terror-related cases. In a midnight address to the nation, Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif unveiled an ambitious anti-terrorism plan after the deadly Taliban school attack that killed 150 people. The 17-point plan comes a week after a six-year moratorium on the death penalty was lifted for terror cases. The FBI is reaching out to over 200 theatres which plan to screen the movie interview on Thursday. The FBI has sent out a roster of those theatres uh, to cyber task forces. People across the United States uh, had already started watching the interview from the safety of their homes. This was uh, when uh, Sony took an unprecedented decision to make the movie available for rental online on Christmas Eve. A U.S. teenager was shot dead by police in St. Louis months after Michael Brown's death uh, set off protests across the country. However, the mayor refused to compare the shooting with the Ferguson case, saying that it was uh, not that the police had initiated it. The, the person has been identified as 18-year-old uh, Antonio Martin, who was shot after he pointed a gun at a policeman. And special midnight prayers were held on Christmas Eve across the world. Thousands of pilgrims gathered in the West Bank city of Bethlehem ahead of the traditional midnight Christmas Mass at the Church of Nativity. The sound of church bells filled Manja Square as religious and political leaders arrived in the town where Christians believe Jesus was born. I feel very, uh, it's very special. I'm Christian and being there for me is very special because uh, well, the atmosphere is very different and uh, you can feel the, yeah, the Christianity of people. Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas delivered holiday greetings and said he hoped for a year of peace in the region. <laughs> At St. Peter's Square in Rome, Pope Francis conducted the Midnight Mass, marking his second Christmas as leader of the Catholic Church. Gente. 
Pope Francis is slated to deliver his Christmas Day message to the world later on Thursday. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And U.S. President Barack Obama and his first lady Michelle Obama also wished all Americans a Merry Christmas. In an annual address, Obama said that the festival is all about being together with family and loved ones. First lady Michelle Obama also gave her message of love on the occasion. Merry Christmas, everybody. Now, we're not going to take too much of your time because today's about family and being together with the ones you love. And luckily for me, that means I get a little help on the weekly address as well. The holidays at the White House are such a wonderful time of year. We fill the halls with decorations, Christmas trees, and carolers. And today, our family will join millions across the country in celebrating the birth of Jesus. The birth not just of a baby in a manger, but the message that has changed the world. To reach out to the sick, the hungry, the troubled, and above all else, to love one another as we would be loved ourselves. So Merry Christmas, everybody. May God bless you all. And Christians across India also soaked in the spirit of Yuletide, uh, attending special midnight mass prayers and singing carols on the Christmas Eve. Christians across India thronged churches for special midnight mass prayers on Christmas Eve. Churches resounded with the joyful singing of Christmas carols and thanksgiving. In Naitiha, Bengaluru, people reveled in the spirit of Yuletide. Archbishop Bernard Morris said to cherish peace and goodwill is the real spirit of Christmas. The birth of Jesus Christ announced the peace to men of goodwill. And that is what, that is what uh, angels announced to the men of goodwill. In this midnight celebration, year after year, is something that shows and that you want to follow the footsteps of the Lord. In Kolkata, New Delhi and Chennai as well, priests perform rituals and organized prayer sessions to celebrate the Christmas spirit. Churches were decorated with colorful lights, while idols of baby Jesus Christ, Mother Mary and Joseph were placed in the Christmas table. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Now, no factory should detain workers beyond eight hours of work without fair compensation. Well, this is what the Standing Committee on Labour has told the central government after reviewing its Factories Amendment Bill 2014. The committee has also asked the government to rethink a few provisions of the Factories Amendment Bill 2014. Here are the details. The Standing Committee on Labour wants the government to reconsider provisions for the proposed Factories Amendment Bill 2014, its third report tabled in Parliament. It has drawn the attention of the government to the proposal that seeks to extend working hours beyond eight hours. The committee feels that this provision will allow factories to harass employees. The committee has recommended that these whole aspects need to be revisited because it will lead to the harassment of the workers and unduly detaining him without any remuneration in the workplace. Although he is legally, lawfully obliged to be in the workplace for eight hours only. The committee has also rejected the government's proposal to extend quarterly working hours to 125 hours from the present 75. It feels this will hamper employment opportunities. The committee warned that trade unions will oppose the bill on this count if it's passed. The trade unions have not 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 70% तो बिल का मुख्य उद्देश्य होता है श्रमिकों की सुरक्षा स्वास्थ्य और उनके कल्याण की बात में तो इसमें जो है ना इसको पूर्व की यथास्थिति में इसको रखा जाना चाहिए The committee also advised the government to take into account hazardous working conditions in factories while seeking special provisions for the safety of the workers Committee recommended that both process and substance should be retained and that to a committee also insisted that schedule one should not be deleted, it should be retained and it should be updated from time to time because the character of hazards also changes uh, along with the changes in the technology or character of the industry, new industry are coming. The Factories Amendment Bill 2014 was introduced in Lok Sabha on 7th August 2014. It was referred to the Standing Committee on 16 September. Raj Kamal Rao's report for Raj Sabha TV. Well, that's all in this edition of uh, Breakfast News. Have a great day ahead and wishing you all again a very Merry Christmas. Thanks for watching.